Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite vintage publishers, that's Badger Books. Now, Badger weren't around for very long, but they published so all manner of uh, macabre and fantastic titles, and that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. So this is one of the earliest uh, Badger books I've got. Now, most of the Badger books have got this little uh, sort of logo on the side there with a badger on. Um, they were actually published by John Spencer. Um, and John Spencer were um, a British publisher who did sort of pulps and they did some magazines as well. Um, however, this particular one is certainly not what the Badger books are collected for. Um, and I've got plenty of those to show you later on. And those are the um, the science fiction and supernatural series, um, uh, mainly written by the very prolific Lionel uh, Fanthorpe, who uh, pretty much wrote most of these. Um, however, um, I do have a few others, so whenever I saw a Badger book, I would always try and grab one. So that is not typical by any means. Now, this next one here, um, this has got the SP uh, logo on there, and it's got Badger books there. This is a little bit later now. It's even got um, a British decimal price rather than an original, um, like two and six, for example, 12 hours to destiny. Um, yeah, very much. This is a very tail end one. I'm not even sure what the SP stands for, but maybe someone can leave a comment in that one. All right. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the covers seem to be done by the same people, but uh, once again, I shall leave that to the experts to see if they can spot them. So as well as doing, you know, the supernatural stuff, as I said, I picked up any Badger book that I could find. And believe it or not, these are the very, so amongst the very few romance books in my um, collection. You see this has got RS, which I can only assume stands for romance, uh, romance number 19. Um, and don't forget in the uh, early 60s, a lot of these have got medical, um, a medical bent. Um, in the early 60s, you had sort of Emergency Ward 10 uh, was very, very popular uh, as a TV show long before the days of casualty. Um, so maybe that was some sort of a loose tie into that sort of market there. Um, but that's RS27. And I've got one other in the romance series, once again, sort of doctors related, um, RS39. Um, quite interesting that these are all um, all sort of Doctor related. Of course, Doctor Kildare would have also been around and you have to think um, that does look a little bit like uh, Richard Chamberlain there. So that's the romance ones out of the way. Now, um, this is what I would call a fake Badger book and it's actually a Cobra book, but it looks just like the Badger books and you'd easily be able to uh, mistake them. It's even published by John Spencer, but it's not. But And it's part of their World War II series and this is number 44. Um, I've got some more wor World War uh, books to show you in a minute. Um, and this one's ever so slightly larger in sort of more a uh, more pulp, uh, pulp size rather than anything else. Um, so that's that one, which is quite unusual that. And then we got another war one, which is a Badger book this time. The World War II series, number 23, Rangoon episode. And a couple more war ones. This is number 89, Sky Command, Anton Rickler. <laughs> And number 101 with Flame and Sabre. This is a novel of the American Civil War. So there you go. Look at that. Don't often see books in that era. Pretty beaten up copy of these. I've never really gone out of my way to try and find Badger books online. They are there. Um, although, you know, even a cursory search on eBay today and you don't find many, um, but they are there and they tend to go for at least a five or more per book. Um, I've seen odd collections um, go for a few hundred, you know, someone's got 20 or 30 pounds, 20 or 30 books rather in a collection and that sell for a few hundred pounds. So bear that in mind if you are thinking of getting these. Um, however, all of mine I've been able to find out in the wild in sort of charity shops and boot sales and jumble sales, that sort of thing. 
nothing. I don't think I've ever actually um, paid any sort of money for them. Certainly wouldn't have paid anything for these, these war and romance ones. They're just ones that I've come across and because they're badger, I've picked them up because they are pretty scarce um, and they are quite distinctive. I so said, I haven't got that many, but I've got quite a, quite a nice run. What I've got, I'm very pleased with. Um, I've just got a few more World War Ones to show you. So No Man Divided, which is World War 142. Dimuk cover artist there. You can tell this is sort of a later one. It's a bit more robust. I would say these are probably early 60s, although a lot of these aren't dated. Yeah, there's no date on that one, but it feels like an early 60s book. Um, How Few the Brave. The Second World War, a title again. And you'll notice that you will not find very many recognized authors in Badger because uh, they just didn't print that many. Um, and I believe this is my last World War One, which is number 150. We, are, we the Damned. And this is about um, someone trying to escape from a uh, internment camp during the Second World War, a prisoner of war internment camp. So that's my last war one. Now we move on to these. So this is the first of, these are far, far more collectible and sought after. Um, so this is supernatural story. So this is more like a pulp release. So it says a bi-monthly pocketbook, uh, number 21, um, by Trevor Thorpe. So I'm not sure. I, I, as I said, Lionel Fanthorpe wrote most of them. And the fact that that's like a little play on his words, on his name rather, would make me suspect that this is one of his. Um, however, I don't think I've got a definitive list of all his uh, various pseudonyms, but I would imagine. See, Brom Fane definitely was him. So chances are this is one of the ones that he, uh, yeah. So in actual fact, look, that one is quite interesting. So that's by R.L. Fanthorpe. That was also by him and that, I think these are all by him, the whole lot. So uh, yeah, Supernatural and the sci-fi, some of the sci-fi he did. This is that one. That's number 21. Similar series, number 24. Interesting with this one, it's actually got a 35 cent uh, sticker. Um, so that could well have been where the British price was. Um, there's two shillings on the spine. Uh, this is number 24. Um, yeah, once again, very, very similar. Leo Brett. Uh, what's this? Oh, look at that. A free hairdryer. Oh, there you go. I don't really want a free hairdryer. <laughs> yeah. So once again, that Peltor, those are all Lionel Fanthorpe uh, pseudonyms. So again, no actual date on these. So uh, they are jolly tricky. Jolly tricky today. Let's get those right to the back of the picture and keep them in there. Okay, so Supernatural Special. Treeball Thorpe, that's quite a nice cover, isn't it? Five Faces of Fear. This is Supernatural number 32. Cool, look how tiny that writing is. Oh, that was always funny. It was the uh, Joan the Wad. <laughs> these really are very very pulpy and they would have been uh on the sale on sale you know just for a month or two on the uh the british newsstands before uh, disappearing and being pulped for the ready for the next lot um number 40 last valkyrie lionel roberts again supernatural special Uh, this one's been signed for him. So I was lucky enough to um, meet Lionel Fanthorpe um, at a convention in Plymouth. He came to, to a convention. I was there as a book dealer um, when I had the store. Um, and I had a stall there, but of course I, I knew of his connection to Badger. So I took along everything that I, I had at the time and he picked out the ones that he wrote and um, he signed all of those for me. So as we go along, you'll find some of these have been signed by him. In fact, there's another one. Pretty, pretty ropey condition. Um, he was actually down quite recently, again, uh, but alas, I was working and I wasn't able to get the time off to go and see him because I would have uh, taken another batch along the room to get signed. Uh, but a very, very friendly, friendly chat. Um, Supernatural series again, number 48. Uh, 58, Supernatural, Face in the Night. Strange, weird and eerie. A nice condition one that 
as I said, the condition of mine do vary immensely simply because of where, I mean, that one's almost new, but uh, from where I've picked them up over the years, you know, so that's the only reason why. Uh, but what fantastic covers these start to make, don't they, when you get a collection of them? They really are great. Uh, the one I most want, I think it's called Rodent Terror or something like that. It's got a giant rat on the front and I would absolutely love that one. However, I've not been able to come across a copy. Um, maybe that's one I should try and uh, track down on eBay, maybe. Um, we're on Supernatural number 74 now. Leo Brett again, she's a fan thought. And interesting that not a single one of these has had a date on it. But as I said, the, the pulpy larger ones are late 50s, and these ones are sort of early, early 1960s. Supernatural number 81. Bronfain. Uh, so the story goes that um, Fanthorpe himself was churning these out at an incredible rate, and uh, he would basically almost like lie in bed with a tape recorder and narrate them, uh, and either his, his partner or he had a secretary would go around and type them up as quickly as he could pretty much come up with the stories, which is fantastic when you think about it. Um, that's a really, uh, really nice cover there. I'm trying to think who this author is. It says Fox. Now, I've heard of a gardener Fox, but I don't think it would be him. I think that was more US comics, but um, Fox seems to be the illustrator that comes up again and again. A nice one, that. The Macabre ones. The Unconfined R.L. Fanthorpe. So he's used his own name on this one. So again, that's actually a really nice, nice copy of that one. Number 102 in the series, so quite late, quite late. You get your Charles Atlas body there. <laughs> well, that's actually some other reading. So yes, look, it's got a Western, LW. I don't think I've got any of the Westerns. Sci-Fi, SF, World War, and another Western, a BW. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the, uh, the different series are in actual fact. That's pretty nice though, isn't it? That's a nice little copy of that. I wonder what his collection must be like, old Fanthorpe's himself. Must be really interesting to see. Um, so, still on the Supernatural, and this is number 103. Uh, so they're keeping the sort of the pulp theme going. That's got a little bit of wear down in the corner there, but as I said, these do, uh, these do come from all manner of sources. It's not like they're high collectibles. So here's number 105. Curse of Can, Fanthorpe again, and these later ones I do seem to have in slightly better condition, so maybe uh, these are a bit more up to date. I wonder what sort of era this is. I know it's early 60s. I'm half tempted to say this is like 62, 63. I mean, it's three and six, which was not cheap. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, maybe we're up to about the mid 60s by now, possibly for that one, number 105. Another one here, number 106. This is a name I don't recognise, John Crawford. Um, so whether they did start getting another publisher in or not, I don't know. It's got a little stamp from Barcelona. I always love uh, seeing the history of sometimes where books come from. And you have to think, how on earth did it get to England? You know? <laughs> um, right, so that's it for the su Supernatural. Um, number 100. Six was my last one of those. So let's just make a little bit of room so we can then get into the sci-fi ones, which are equally cool. So they're next. So back in time again to, I think, I would think the late 50s, 58, 59, something along those lines with Barrier Unknown, A.J. Merak. Now, I don't think Fanthorpe did as many of these, although he did, definitely did some of the later ones. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for those as we go through the collection. So it was number 30, that's my earliest one. Um, this is number 33. Well, Murray Linster, he actually is a sci-fi author in his own right. Um, and this is one of his, uh, so this is actually quite a, quite a good steal for Badger, I think, getting a big name author in, or someone who would become a big name. And certainly that's a nice copy of that one as well. Um, so quite, quite happy to have that one. What a shame we haven't got, um, Look at that. I was just going to say, we, we haven't got uh, a date. This is one which actually has a date, Badger Book Edition 1960. First published by Ace in 1954. 
Um, I seem to remember I have a version of Brain Stealers as an ace double. Um, so it's half the book is is Brain Stealers, the other half is another sci-fi book. Um, maybe I'll dig those out for a future video, but I reckon I've got that one again as well. That's quite interesting. And 1960, so we were pretty much spot on with our ages here. Um, oh, Lionel Roberts. So this is Fan Thorpe. Uh, this is sci-fi number 37, The In World. A nice jacket as well, isn't it? These are real classic from the 50s. This would have been one I'd love to have in nice high grade. Like it's got a big one shilling on the front there, but beggars can't be choosers. And there we are, he signed it as well, uh, which is really good. So to have that signed is cool. Uh, we got number 40. So Leo Brett, that's that's uh, Fanthorpe again, Exit Humanity. That looks like, uh, what was that classic film? Um, to that 50s B movie. What was that called again? Um, is it The Day the Earth Caught Fire? I think it's called. Um, where they do that mass e um, exodus from Earth. Okay. We are over halfway now. World of the Gods by Pell Toro. That's another fan thought. That's number 45 in the sci-fi series. Now we got number 46, Last Man on Earth. Once again, it was so long ago, my worst condition copies are the ones that he signed. <laughs> it's because all, that's all I had at the time. At the Uninvited, now, um, I believe Badger were one of those companies, a bit like Digit, where they reused cover artwork. So I think this particular cover, which is absolutely fantastic, you have to admit, it's fantastic. This um, was reused a couple of times. So uh, we might see one of these come up again. And that one's been signed as well, which is really nice. I remember having a, a book as a kid on UFO invasion called The Uninvited. Um, nothing to do with that one. Mind Makers, number 58. Another fantastic cover. I mean, these are really great jackets, aren't they? And uh, that is uh, perhaps the main reason for collecting these. The actual content is highly variable, um, as you can imagine. And that one's signed as well. Venus Venture, this is number 62. This makes me think of um, Forbidden Planet. Another fantastic 50s. B movie, Infinity Machine, John Muller. You have to wonder whatever happened to all the color, cover artwork. It must exist somewhere, or did it get destroyed? Is it in a, a publisher's archive somewhere? Number seventy-four. Now the X Machine, Johnny Muller. Fox again as the cover artist. You recognise the sort of style on some of these. That one's signed as well. Atomic ne Nemesis, Carl Siegfried. Yeah, another one. Very old hammered paperback. That one. I think that's probably been through the wards a little bit. <laughs> Zero minus X. This is sci-fi 80, number 81 now. Carl Siegfried. And they do make quite a nice collection, don't they, these? I've got to say they are good fun. Uh, Radar Alert. Carl Siegfried again. And they certainly got their fans, although, as I said, although I pick them up when I find them, I've never been um, actively tracking them down, like, say, some of my other series, like my you know, Vintage Penguins and things like that, simply because, you know, uh, there's so many of them, and, the, you know, they're just fun to collect when you come across them. You think, oh, look, brilliant, I've got a Badger book, which I may, may or may not have, but um, I've certainly not spent the money to try and track them down. But after looking at all these, I think it would be nice to get a few more, because it's been probably a few years since I've come across one in the wild. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of these now are 50, 60 years old. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, like a lot of vintage paperbacks, particularly in Britain, they've just dried up. 
they're just not around. So the ones that come to the market are ones uh, uh, where the original collectors have died, sadly, and their, their collections have gone on the market. That's certainly the case with rare Penguin books these days. The only time I seem to get any is when one of the uh, members of the Penguin Collector Society has, has passed away and um, their collection's gone to a dealer who's, who's gone around to put them up. Uh, for sale on their behalf, he's done a catalogue. So it's very shame, but it's it's a bit of a, a reflection on the hobby that um, I can't imagine there's lots of youngsters getting into collecting vintage paperbacks. Um, but for me growing up, um, you know, with only three TV channels on on screen, um, paperbacks was, was my escapism and I've always loved them. So uh, quite a prolific reader, I would say. Uh, now, sci-fi number 90. Uh, plan for conquest. A. A. Glynn. Now this is not a name I recognise. If that's a pseudonym or not, I don't know if it's one. If it's by now, they got a few different authors in towards the tail end of this series, similar to what they did with the fantasy line. Although Bron Frame, well, uh, Fane, this is definitely Fanthorpe again. Uh, yeah, just the last few to go through now. So once again, I think this is another picture a cover that's been used before. The Last Astronaut, number 93 in the sci-fi series. That one's signed. 96, Reactor XK9. They're fantastic, isn't they? Absolutely fantastic, these. I love them. <laughs> John Muller. This is Sci-Fi 103, Projection Infinity. Another one signed there. Not many to go now, just a handful. Beyond the Void, John Muller. This is 112. Forty p. There you go. That's the sort of time or prices I'd be paying for these when I used to find them. One one four. The girl from tomorrow. This looks very sixties, doesn't it? This one. I have to say, you know, that sort of strikes me as like an early, uh, early sixties sort of style woman. There. Is it dated? No. Well, we only found one that was dated, didn't we? Amazing. So that's one one four. Still sci-fi. One one five. UFO 517 by Brom Fane. UFO 517. So he was doing some of these later ones. A couple more now. Phenomenon X. I think we've seen this cover before, but it's reused again for number 116. Um, four shillings. Oh no, that's four shillings in New Zealand. Um, no British price on the front or the back, but I'd imagine this is two and six or three and six. Also signed that one. I think that's it for my sci-fi series. And this one is a totally world personality series number one. World personality, the Danny Kay saga. So Danny Kay was a late 50s, early 60s uh, uh, celebrity, uh, certainly before my time. But this is absolutely mint, this one. Um, so the Danny Kay saga. John Spencer again, it is a Badger book. Badger book edition 1959 in memory of Robert Hale. There we are, look at that. Who was the original publisher of this book. So quite an unusual Badger book. Now, the one book about Badgers that I've got, but more not really about the publisher, but more about the, uh, the amazing Lionel Fanthorpe is this one, which is called uh, Down the Badger Hole. So this in itself is fantastic. Um, it's by Debbie Cross. I'm not sure how difficult this would be for you to track a copy down. Um, but the cover is great. So it's got a pile of there. Um, it's got the tape recorder, the real to reels, which is how he used to narrate the books. There, if you can see it, Rotent Mutation. There we are. That's the book I'm after, that particular one. So if anyone's got a copy of that and they'd like me to get shot, like to get shot of it to me, that's the one I'm after. It looks great, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, um, it includes, it's got an introduction by David Langford. He was a noted sci-fi and fantasy historian. Um, and then a full length story, Curse of the Can, um, which I don't know, was that one of the ones we had? 
Um, that seems to ring a bell, so maybe that was a reprint. Then there's some more on the back there, all, a lot of the different titles. Some of these we've seen, some of them we, we haven't. And this was like one of those ones that was privately printed. So it's got a bibliography of all the books that he did, which is quite handy, isn't it? And then there's Curse of the Can. Some of his uh, letters. He never got much. Look, we herewith enclose our cheque for £70 together with your account rendered. We would point out, however, that you have quoted three items on your account at £25 each, whereas in fact your invoice in each case were for 45,000 word manuscripts at £22 and 10 shillings. <laughs> Penny pinches, I think that's what they were. So this came out in 1995, so you are going to probably struggle to get a copy. Um, and there it is, uh, signed by uh, Lionel Fanthorpe and his wife, Patricia. Yeah. And she, uh, she did the introductions. So that's certainly one which you might want to track down. Um, but a cursory inspection on eBay finds that these are not too expensive, um, five pounds or less per copy. However, if you do see a little run of say 10 or 20 books, um, usually I would say that's the way to do it, but those seem to be going for even more. Um, so, you know, maybe uh, you might need to just keep an eye out for them, but they are so distinctive with those lovely yellow spines that I don't think you'll have trouble. If you keep your eye open from now on, you will start coming across them. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that look at Badger Books. They certainly are a great little publisher. Um, so if you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.